Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Sometimes when you're taking pictures, you get a real nice picture. Like we have a real nice clean shot here of this Alpha Romeo, an early Alpha Romeo, but it lacks drama. In this case, it looks as if this picture was just sitting here, like the driver parked the car on the street here, hopped in, looked like he was doing something, and a still shot was taken. If you zoom in on the wheels, you'll see there actually is a little bit of motion on those, but the shutter speed is so fast, it freezes all that motion. Now we can use Photoshop elements to improve this picture a lot and make it far more interesting by putting that motion back in using motion blur techniques. Let me show you the finished up here. There we go. So just by adding in a motion blur, it looks as if the car is actually in motion and racing around that corner, including motions on the wheels and so forth. It's all easy to do. You just have to go through the proper series of steps. Okay, let's just do that project. Now I'm going to bring this window down a little bit here, and let's just minimize our size a touch, and we'll zoom out. There we go. Now to do this, we need to separate the car from the background. So we can then blur the background without blurring the car. I also want to come in and on our removed picture actually take the car out of that picture because as we blur the background forwards and backwards it's going to stretch the car and that's going to show behind our clean view. So we have basically four steps. First, remove the car from the shot second one clean the background up third blur the background and then fourth do a spin blur on the wheels all right let's go ahead and do all those steps now on this one you can see right down here here is my car i did a mat on this so i first made a careful selection and then did a mat on that selection now i'm not going to force you to watch me spend a long time making a real careful selection on this, but I'll show you what I did do. Get rid of all that stuff. There we go. And I went ahead and saved my selection. Now the tools that I use for my selections depend upon the image I'm working with. I'll be using different tools for different images. Now this tool has real hard edges pretty much. Very, very hard edges, but it has a, a confused background, so it's difficult in some spots to use tools like the magic wand. So, in this instance, I decided to use the polygonal lasso tool. And I'll do just a little bit here to show you how I approach this. So, lasso tool. And I just began at a spot, I began right there. And then making just little short movements, I took the time and carefully made a selection, just like I'm doing right now, just really carefully moving along and making a very careful selection around the whole image. Now this technique takes a little longer than other techniques possibly, but I have complete control over this. So if it's a critical selection, I'll frequently go ahead and grab the polygonal lasso tool and just take the time to do a very careful selection. So that's what I did, and I went clear around the whole car to get this selection. Now if you're doing this and you're zoomed in like this, when you get to an edge, don't worry about that, just move the tool up next to that edge and the window automatically scrolls for you so you can just keep on selecting. Okay there we go that's what I did I'll just double click on that and I won't bother going any further on that selection but that's the technique that I use to do a very careful selection. So you know any selection that you want to use any selection technique you want to use is fine as long as it gives you the effect that you want. Again in this case that's the one that I chose to use. Okay so once I have my selection made, and that was the most time-consuming part of this whole project, was making that one selection. Once that's done, I then save my selection. It's a habit that I always get into. 
Now that I have that, go up here to select and I'll load the selection that I saved. And I have it saved here as car, choose OK, and it loads back in that selection. There we go. So there's my selection. And again, I made that using the polygonal lasso tool. It's going carefully around the image. Notice I didn't do inside the windscreen. We'll get that in a little bit. Now at this point, I'm going to need a couple of new layers back here. I always make at least one layer and then hide my background just in case. That gives me a protection. In case I mess things up, I can always go back to my original. It's right there and then just start over again. So it's a good habit to be in to always save your background and not touch your background. So I make one copy. This will be our background blurred layer. And then above that one more copy, this one will be the car layer. So let's just go ahead and name these things. That will be the blur layer and this one will be the car layer. On the car layer, I want this selected out with the layer mask. Now I've already made my selection, so this is easy to do. Just click the mask button right there, add a mask, and that gives me that as a, you know, the car separated out as a layer mask. Okay, that, that part's done. That's easy. We'll hide that layer and then come down to our blur layer. Now in the blur layer, as I mentioned, I want to hide the car. I want to get rid of the car and just leave the background. And the reason for this is when you blur something, it's going to spread this out further. I can demonstrate that pretty easily here. Let's just grab the filter and blur. We'll be using a motion blur on this. I'll just choose OK. See how it blurs the car in there? If I had the car sitting on top, then you would see some of that blur in behind. See, there's a blur of his helmet right there on both sides. Here's a blur of that wheel up here. And there's a real obvious blur of that background. So I don't want to have that stuff happening. So we need to remove the car from that shot. Let's just undo the motion blur and I'll hide that layer again. That's fine. Back to our background layer. So we're going to use the clone stamp tool right over here. And there we go. There's the size I'll be using. It's a pretty pretty good size brush on that. I'll just, just a standard clone stamp. Now it doesn't need to be accurate on this because of course the new car is going to be sitting right on top of where this one is. And the background is going to be all blurred. So this can be a pretty rough clone stamp. I'm just going to grab up here somewhere, Alt key and click and I'll grab some of that rock wall and then just quickly come in and paint out some of this like that. And I'll do this fairly quickly again because it's not going to be critical. It's one of the nice things about this technique. And I'll paint this down to about where that curb would be right there. Here's our bottom curb right down here. I'll just paint this bit out. So about like that is where the curve is going to be. I'll grab this rock and I'll just pull a little bit over here just for the heck of it. And I'll grab this little line and I'll ex extend that line down. It doesn't really need to be extended. That, that's not really that critical. But it allows me to come in here and blur in some of this background stuff. Notice I'm trying to stay in the same kind of texture. That's because the blurring will be showing the texture that we have in here. And let's kind of continue on. Now, I'm going to be staying away from that shadow under there pretty much. It's not a critical thing. You can always put in your own shadow, but I'll be using that shadow just as a reference in here. It's going to be getting blurred as well. And we'll come back and we'll be doing a little bit of shadow touch up a little further on down. I mean, just a little bit of that shadow where that that wheel is. Again, that's going to be just a reference. In any case, just like that, just real fast blur. Let's now come in and copy a little bit of the shadow and I'll put some shadow in there where that tire was. Just kind of fill that in and extend that back in where the other tires are background tire was in here somewhere. On the wheels is a little thin shadow on the wheels. You can see one right there. And there's a little bit of one, kind of hard to see here. We'll put that shadow back in a little later on. But that cleans up our background. 
And I can now zoom back out. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't matter again because if I put the car back on top, you don't see that. Now, we do have this kind of wheel floating effect right there because the shadow has been removed. It's a little bit removed here and here as well. We'll fix that in a little bit. So there's our clean background. Now we can put our motion blur on this background. I'll put the car back in just as reference. Make sure you're on the background layer and go to the move tool and filter blur. We're using motion blur for this one. Now it popped back into the things that I already used, which is nice. So you can see what I did. There's a, a six degree angle on this. I just looked at kind of the angle of the car, kind of the way the car was, was going. And you can see these streaks in here. I tried to match the streaks to match the angle of the car. That's assuming I was following this car with my camera and took a picture like that. I'd be following the car, so the motion of the car's direction would be the motion of my blur. So I did that. The amount of blur back here, it's a personal preference. You can use you know, less blur or more blur. It's up to you how much blur you want to have in there. I just happened to use 121. I thought that looked nice for this picture. Again, that's just a personal taste on that one. And she was okay. That takes care of that background blur. Okay, next we have the wheels, which are not blurred. Let's take a look at that. So the wheels are just sitting there. I need to fix the wheels. We have our shadows. We'll get to that in just a little bit. And we have this windscreen. So we didn't get any blurring in the windscreen. So I need to fix the windscreen next. Now this is just on the mat over here. So click on the mat. Make sure you see that light blue outline around it. If you do, then you're fine. You're on the mat. Black hides and white shows. So I want to hide this section. I want to have black inside here. So to do this, I'll take the polygonal lasso tool again. I'm going to carefully make a selection inside of the windscreen. Now I could have done this at the very start, but I just didn't feel like it. So I'll make a careful selection around the windscreen here. And we'll come around the edge. And once this is done, I'm going to come back in and paint black into here, which is going to hide this part of this image and show that blurred part in behind. There we go. We have black as our foreground color. That's fine. Grab the paintbrush. There's the paintbrush size. You can see right there. Good enough. And just paint black into that area. And that's good. Okay. And then deselect. Now, if you look at this, you see it's kind of a hard edge along here, kind of hard edge in there. I want to soften the edge up a little bit. It's a hard edge because of the kind of of masking I did. We can soften that hard edge up very easily. And that's because you can blur your layer mask. So still on the layer mask, let's go up here to the filter, come down to blur and grab the Gaussian blur. And that's really huge, 13 point. I'm going to pull it way down. So I have just a 0.1 blur in here. I'm just going to pull this up just a little bit. And you can see how it begins to blur that edge or soften up that edge. That kind of fixes that, that hard effect. Now there are some spots like right in here you can kind of see the edge again. We'll fix that in just a bit. So there's a little blur, maybe just one pixel radius is enough to soften that up. So here's without and there's with. It just kind of softens up the edge of that just a touch. Now I want to Come back in and clean up just a few spots right in here and right in here, right there. Those look a little odd, maybe right in here. So it'll be just a few spots around that may need a little bit of cleanup right in here. And I'll do that by again painting black on my car here. Let's go back to the paintbrush and I'll bring the paintbrush way down. Maybe eight's pretty good. I'm still a soft brush. And it's on black. I'm painting on the mat. And then just paint right in against that edge there. And just kind of clean up that edge. There we go. Again, it doesn't take very much in here to do this bit. Just a little bit where it's looking a little bit odd. And right up here. 
and a little bit right down in there. And it looks pretty good. Let's come back to the back here, a little bit right in there. So just go around the whole image and any place where it looks a little odd, and that's caused by that Gaussian blur. It's a little odd, just come back in and touch up the edge of that. It looks fine down here as you can see. That's all good. Everything's fine around the wheel. That's fine. I already know the bottom of the car is fine. This wheel looks good. Back up around this edge. That all looks good. And everything else is fine. It was just that little bit right there that was a little bit odd. Okay, so that takes care of the mat and the windshield. Windshield is fine. Now you can see through the windshield. There we are. Next thing we have these tires. The tires need to be spinning and we're not seeing any spin on them right now. So to do this we'll be doing a radial blur to actually spin the wheel. Now I want to have the blur just affect just the wheel and nothing else. And we can do that by putting in an elliptical marquee right around the wheel. Now to make this easy I'm going to pull in a couple of guidelines. So here's a top guideline into the top of the wheel right there. Left side guideline into the left side of the wheel which is kind of hard to see but right about there. And then elliptical marquee. Make sure you're on new selection down here. No feathering. It's not needed. And then go to the upper left hand corner right here. Click on that and drag down and that will give you the beginning of your circle where you want it or your ellipse. And then just pull it out until you have a nice fit on that tire. It doesn't need to be perfect, which is a nice thing about this. There we go. I want it a little bit lower than that. So I'll use my cursor keys, the arrow keys on my keyboard, and just kind of tap that down just a little bit. So I'm not getting the edge of the car over here. Okay, there we go. That's good. We now can go up to Filter and Blur and Radial Blur. And this allows us to spin something. It's going to spin centered upon the center of our selection. In this case, that's perfect because that the center of our selection is just about the center of the wheel. Maybe it's off by just a little bit, but it's not going to matter here on this one. Now, I have mine set at 10. You may want to try a few different settings to see what it looks like. We have two methods in here. Zoom right there and spin. The one you want is spin. Good quality is fine for this image. Choose OK. And forgot one thing. Let's just edit, undo that. Forgot to be on the actual image over here. So make sure you're on the image right there. There we go. And then filter, blur, radio blur. Leave it the same settings and OK. And there we go. A nice little blur of that wheel. And it looks like the wheel is in motion now. OK, same thing on our next wheel back here. Let's do some new guides. So let's go to view clear guides out and let's pull down some new guides again top of the wheel up there and left side of the wheel back to the elliptical marquee same exact thing grab the upper left hand and then pull it down just like that and to get the wheel now this is a little bit off center as you can see there a little bit further off center it's not really going to matter with this it's going to be okay arrow keys crystal keys to move that down just a touch that's good Filter, blur, we're still using the radial blur right there. And if you want to, you can actually grab this and move the position of the blur center. I'm going to pull it over just a little bit to the right, just a bit, not much. And that's just because the center of this wheel is a little bit further back visually than the other wheel is. Because he's turning the corners, the other wheel is angled a bit differently. Choose OK. And it gives us that nice radial blur on that back wheel. It looks like it's in motion. That's fine. Okay, now this wheel is a little bit tricky because I can't just do a circle in here. It's going to blur this part of the front of the car as well. Let me just demonstrate that and let's clear the guides and pull new guides in. Again, top of the wheel, which is right there, and left side give us a starting point. And again, the elliptical marquee, same exact trick. Pull that down until the wheel size fits. And you can see how our selection now comes in and grabs part of the front of the car. 
So what we need to do is to grab this part of the car and select that out and save that as a new layer so that we can then put that on top of this part of the wheel and then blur this bit. So let's do that. Select and deselect. In this case, I'll use the selection brush right down here. And let's make a copy of this layer. I shall just do it like this. We're fine. As is. And I'm just going to come in here and do a real fast selection around that bit of the image and kind of out in there and that's about what I need. If you want to be real careful you could do a real careful fine selection on this but I think this will work out fine for this particular use. There we go. Now make sure you're on the car like that and I want to inverse this selection. So select inverse because I want to keep that part and and hide everything else. That's now selected. Okay, layer and new layer via copy. And you should see just a little bit like that up there. There you go. If I hide everything as you can see, there's just that front of the car that we just saved out. Okay, now that that's saved, I can do this back wheel. Let's hide this and I'll see how this works in just a second. Okay, elliptical marquee, pull down from the corner, and let's get that wheel size in there. Again, just a little adjustment on the position with my cursor keys, that's fine. Let's spin this with the radial blur. Filter, I'll make sure on the right layer, there we go. Okay, filter, blur, radial blur, leave all the settings the same. She's okay. A little bit of spin there, but you see how it also spins this in here, kind of distorts this. So select, deselect. That's why we saved that little bit. I'll bring that back up again, and that puts that back on top, and there we go. So we have our blur now on the back wheel. And let's get rid of those guides, clear guides. Let's back out, see how we're doing. Everything looks good except for the shadows. The car shadow is fine, but we need some shadowing underneath those wheels. That's our last little bit. Once that's done, the picture is finished. So let's do a shadow beneath the wheels. Now, I want this shadow above this background layer, below the car layer, and we'll zoom in a little bit. Now to do this, see this is kind of a line, but it's kind of fuzzy on the sides. We'll use that as our key, and we'll put a line under these wheels, and then we'll fuzz it out. So grab the line tool, make sure you're on black. I have mine set at 10 pixels, make sure it's just the line, no styling, no arrowheads on it, so it's just, just the line. And then I'll click about, about the width of the wheel in here. I'll click and I'll pull a line just about like that, so it's right on that wheel. Let's come back here, do the same thing on the wheel in the back right there. Try to keep these parallel. And then these two wheels, same exact thing about the width of that wheel. Now it's off by just a little bit. I'm going to undo that one. Let's try that again. That's a bit better. And then our final wheel back there. Do a line like that. Now what this does is it gives you these shape layers. So let's click on one shape layer, come down to the bottom one. So I Held the shift key and shift click to these and that gives me all four selected. Right click, merge shapes, mix them all in one layer. Right click, simplify layer, and now they're just graphic lines. We can now blur those out using our Gaussian blur. So I'll filter and blur, Gaussian blur right there. You can find where the line is, there's the line. And I'll just begin pulling this over until the quality of that blur kind of matches the quality of that. So it's about like about like that. We'll do a little bit of touch up in just a second on those, but about about in there's pretty good. 
choose OK. Now I want to blend those in better with our background, so not really kind of sitting on top. And we can do that up here by grabbing a blending mode, and we're going to blend this in to the background. So see how that's done. Here we go. Let's come down with we'll do overlay on this. And that just blends it into the road a little bit. So far, so good. Now, it's, they look a little bit odd still, so we'll do a little bit of more fudging on these things to improve the look. I just want to kind of soften up these edges so they, they fade out. So I'll go up here to the Eraser tool and do a pretty good size Eraser tool. Soft Eraser, and that's too big, so maybe about, about 150 or so if you can get into there. I'll just type that in. There we are. Now remember it's a soft edge, so I can come in and just kind of tap in on that edge and soften down the edge of that. It makes it look far more natural. Remember we're on that layer back there. There we go. That's working out pretty well. Just take some of the edge off of the beginning and the end, which makes it look more realistic. And it allows those tires to sit on the road. All right, let's zoom out and see how we did. There we go. So there is our car in motion around the road. We have our nice blurred background. We have our wheels spinning now. We've replaced and fixed our shadowing underneath. And we even have our little windshield fixed as well. So there we go. That is how to put motion into a picture. Let's just bring our back up again. And there's the original. And there we go with our blurred version. So that's how you can take a good picture but add a little more excitement to it in this kind of a car shot by adding in some motion blur. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 